right. Welcome everyone to the Tuesday afternoon advocate news meeting. I'm editor and publisher Chris Cobbler. With me as always to my left. I'm um, Becky Cooper, managing editor. And to my right. Tony Belander, the city editor. And whoops, I got the just I gotta turn the video behind the camera. Thomas Martinez, digital editor. Alright, I'll type in hello, you type in hello. That's how the game is played. We come on every weekday to hear from you, our legions of viewers. Um, right off the top, we'll let you know that we just uh, posted, it is posted now, isn't it, Tom, our audio uh, recording of the uh, Airport Commission meeting June 27th, what was the focus of our Sunday story about uh, how funds were handled at the Victoria Regional Airport. Uh, there was at the partnership meeting, uh, Airport Commissioner Buddy Billups raised questions about that story and I encourage all of you to listen to that audio hearing because it was a completely kind of question the story is a completely fair and accurate representation of the questions raised by the other airport commissioners at that meeting uh, his questions where he said he said he's a longtime reader and supporter of the Victoria Advocate and other family but didn't think the story Sunday um, uh, accurately characterized the issues raised at the airport commission uh, I listened to that meeting and I don't know how it could be any more accurate or fair. Um, he, it certainly is fair that he might have other conclusions or draw answers to those questions uh, different from what the other airport commissioners do. Uh, although he didn't offer, any, uh, he didn't offer, yeah, he was at the partnership meeting this morning. He was at the airport commission the meeting too, but he didn't, but he didn't speak. He didn't speak during the meeting. <clears throat> and he said he didn't speak. I asked him that afterwards. Why, why didn't you, you know, say to Dennis Patello or Trey Bouchard, there no, no merit to your questions. He said he just thought it was much ado about nothing, so he didn't talk about it. We should have spoke up. Didn't we yeah. call all of them? I thought we called all well, Not all of them, no. Oh. Um, all we quoted from the, the so meeting. So did you say this in front of the whole partnership yeah the whole partnership meeting uh -huh. you had a chance to respond i i did at the end uh judge zeller jumped up and said he agreed the story was not accurate and uh and said that the um which was only one issue raised but one issue was the officers club and he thought saving the officers club was definitely a good thing to do and he was happy to have done it but that's to me that's not the core issue of what was raised at the the meeting I spoke up at the end and said, I encourage everybody to listen to the hearing and decide for yourself that the, um, those questions raised at were not the, our questions, even although we certainly shared them once we heard them. Uh, it was with the airport commission members, uh, specifically Trey Ruschop and Dennis Patillo, were their, their questions. And uh, I spoke with both of them Monday, asked them if they had any concerns about the story, and they said no. So, <laughs> and I said that this morning too. Um, they're, they, to be clear, their questions are not, in their minds, accusatory. They're legit, just legitimate questions that need to be answered, and maybe there are legitimate answers to those questions. Now, Gary Burns did speak up this morning when Judge Zeller said, well, all I had to do is do an internet search and see that we passed a resolution September 11th to um, exempt ourselves from the bidding process because of Harvey, because the emergency after Harvey. So, in the, what was that two weeks after Harvey? And Gary Burns interjected and said, I might have voted for that but I didn't know I was voting for a bid exemption forever which I think that's the card of that I and mean, that's the heart of the issue was that because there was an emergency after Harvey that then there's no supervision of this project for forever but I then think, the emergency proclamation expire after so many days well, that's what we need to get answers for and we need to get the invoices we need to get Virtus that has not responded to us yet to explain how they got called into this situation mm -hmm. and why they're the only company doing the work. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, certainly reasonable people can decide they've got reasonable answers to that, but those are the questions we have. And I think those are very reasonable questions. The questions we have and they're questions that came from accurately reporting what the airport commission commissioners <coughs> said. September 11, 2017. Yes. About two yeah. weeks after the hurricane. Right. And I'm the Michelle. work was done early this Work's yeah. been done, not not, oh, not really? no, the yeah. work's been done since oh, since, since then, uh -huh. um, and uh, the question started being raised after the project manager Joyce Dean left employment mm -hmm. uh, for the county in late February. Then the, so the question started coming up about how the project was managed. So, uh, 
we'll have a story about that tomorrow. Tomorrow's paper will continue to cover that. And uh, we'll be covering it for a while. And Beth just joined us. Uh, yeah, we'll be covering it. And uh, other news today, uh, softer news. We've got a, a camp offered at the Texas Zoo, so kids are learning about what veterinarians mm -hmm. do. I'm sure lots of cute photos by Shelby. They each get a, a stuffed animal to take with them as they go around the zoo. And throughout the camp, it changes. It morphs into, like, sick, so it needs care, so they'll have to take care of the animal. Things like that. So. Must be small kids. Mm -hmm. These are young ones, yeah. Oh. Older kids get to do bigger animals, work with bigger animals. Uh, speak before I forget, on the audio hearing, is it a, that story at the top of the page now? People can find that. Uh, yeah, I'll have to repost it. Or, uh, yeah, and yeah, post it out to social too so people can find the link back to it. Uh, yeah. So it's in, so in today's story, that audio clip, and in Sunday's story, which is a longer story going in. Oh, it's, it's in today's commissioner's story. Maureen's oh. updating that one. I updated the original one, I showed her how to do the other one. Okay, make sure so is it in the places. commissioner story or is it in the partnership meeting story? It should be in Sunday's story and today's story and tomorrow's story. Okay. It should be in every, every one of those. It should be in every one of those so anybody can find it easily and listen to it. It's about, maybe it's an hour. I don't know. I listen to it all. So we, she told me to cut it down just into the part about... Yeah. So about this subject. Yeah, how so long is it? It's about 20 minutes. So it's about, yeah, 20 minutes. Oh, is that all? Okay. The whole the whole recording was about forty minutes. The whole meeting, okay. and we we picked it up about so it's about twenty one minutes I think of talking about the airport project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So easy, easy listening, easy listening, and that's what our story's based on. Well, I don't even listen to them. I know our story's accurate. <laughs> well, I know it is, but I still encourage you and everybody else to listen to it because I I think it's you know, worthwhile. You, if you don't understand, you don't know who the voices are, it's it's mainly Dennis talking and then uh, Trey Rushoff talking a bit, and uh, Lenny Urena, the airport manager, talking, uh, yeah, raising questions. And Gary Burns talking a little bit. Briefly, yeah. Talks briefly. So, uh, Trey is the main guy leading the meeting? He's the airport commission chairman, although Dennis Patilla did more of the talking than Trey did. Okay. Trey's got a deep voice, if you want to recognize voices. Um, then, uh, let's see, Victoria College, we got a story on their legislative you sure? funding. Yes, yeah, ready to go, yeah. I think. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yes. Was that for this year? Uh, yeah, on this okay. session, this past <laughs> session. They only meet every year, so we got a whole other year to run that story. And uh, uh, we talked about that story already. How much money they spent. Uh, of course, we've got our <coughs> Alaska for people in memories of Apollo 11. The anniversary is coming right up. Right? 20. 20th anniversary of the moon landing. There's a man in life who came in today. They had an original copy of the San Antonio Light, which isn't even in existence mm -hmm. anymore. It was a commemorative edition that they put out about the moon landing. We got one on the front page over there, don't we? Front page uh, on the wall of mm -hmm. our front page. I'm pretty sure I walked by that. <laughs> that there's a the man. You had to look at that. Um, so, yeah, I remember being in grade school and watching a lot of Apollo missions actually in school, mm -hmm. not just the moon landing. But this one happened during the summer, so we weren't in school. So yeah. I, I vaguely remember watching it on TV during the summer. Yeah, Hollywood did a good job. I remember watching it. I remember my dad saying, you need to watch this. And he also made me watch the speech, uh, Nixon's resignation speech. <laughs> good for him. He said, this is history. You need to watch this. I recorded it. <laughs> and then we went outside when man landed on the moon. We went outside that night and looked, looked really hard at the moon to see if we could see them. <laughs> he said, oh, look, there he is. There he is. Yeah, we were, just, we were using our binoculars, you know, we couldn't see them. Couldn't so, see the man on the moon? So we think it's fake. All right. <laughs> see the green cheese, though? No, no. All right. But you know the same face of the moon is always facing the toward Earth, right? You never, yeah. you never see the dark side. Never see the dark side of the moon? Unless you're a Pink Floyd. That's All right. right. Then uh, we have a short item about there's a news leadership institute. So Saturday morning, if you're interested in running for public office, you can attend this training session. A lot of the details. And uh, in good living, we have a story, Catherine Pope, about floating down the Kamal River and baking a brisket. I don't know if you baked a brisket while you're floating. Not sure. No. So how do you pronounce the name of that river? Kamal. How do you pronounce it? Kamal. Kamal. Al? Was there no. an 
Kamal. Is that a Spanish word? I looked it up. Kamal? I looked it up I don't know. It's C-O-M-A-L. And I even looked up Green Hall or whatever. Green? That's German. What's the word Kamal mean? Kamal. 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 You know what that means? Kamal. You can look it up if you want. What does New Brumples mean? Well, or is it New That's Bronfels? German. No New worries. German for old Bronfels. <laughs> like New York. Was, uh, replacing Old York. Or New Mexico versus Old Mexico. Yeah. And also in Good Living, we're looking at all the other restaurant inspections, all the other uh, food features people love on Wednesday, Good Living, <laughs> along with the food ads. Ray came over to me and said, do we run... The grades at restaurants good by the health department. I said, oh, yeah, their inspection reports. Yeah. I said, you accuse me of not reading the sports section. Yeah. You know, <laughs> don't read the inspection on restaurant inspection on Wednesday. Yeah. I'm afraid to. Oh, Ray, didn't know, didn't, Ray didn't know we did that. You know, the other day I sat out. Oh, never mind. Yeah. I won't say what restaurant. Good. It's a it's a buffet. Let's just say that. All right. Then uh, the Colorado yeah. River is the shortest navigable river in the state of Texas, shortest, in the United States. Uh, we claim the longest, shortest river in the world. The longest, shortest river yeah. in the world? Yeah. That's All right. what the locals call it. Huh. And I'm still looking for that. Yeah. Find the definition. I'm looking. The sports have a feature on the general's pitcher and uh, all star game tonight, Major League 6 o'clock start. Didn't some rookie win the, the home run derby or something? Yeah, he did. And got won a million bucks or something yeah. for winning the home run derby. And he was a rookie getting the minimum contract, like half a million, so he yeah. just doubled his salary, yeah. I think. And um, then, um, I don't know that I'll be watching the All-Star. You going to be watching it, my baseball fan, Tom? Nope. Nope. All right. Because <laughs> they don't let people like Pete Rose bowl over catchers anymore. It's all too nicey-nice. Mm-hmm. Nicey-nice. Chris knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Pete Rose, Ray Fossey. Yeah. They're an all star game. That was an all star game. He, he was a little too, serious too aggressive in the all star game. Oh, right. Really? It hurt somebody during the middle yeah. of the season. Pete but. Rose says you can play to win. I don't care what kind of game it is. This is you know, I always play to win. He had a bet on it, too. I think. Yeah. <laughs> probably. He's probably betting on it now. Yeah. Where is Pete Rose these days? Is he, he show up publicly anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally. And then more Wimbledon today. The women uh, soccer Vegas. team still celebrating Vegas. their World Cup. It was in Vegas. Yeah, the parade tomorrow, right? Yeah. In New York. They were in Times Square this morning. I oh, saw them on the news, but I don't know what yeah, the parade is. What's it called? The Canyon of Heroes? What is that? Uh, what is it called? Uh, before the parade goes down? down. I don't Something know. of heroes. Uh, I guess it's The Boulevard they, of yeah. Broken Dreams? No. <laughs> No, I think it's probably where they have the uh, World I think that's a Lou Reed song. <laughs> the Green Day remake now? Oh, yeah, they did Green Day. Green no, okay, sorry. Lou, Lou Reed's song was uh, Dirty Boulevard. Wow. But you're, 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 doing great. you're right. <laughs> well, I was about ready to yeah, say. That yeah. disappoints me. All right. All right. Okay. For those of y'all who are interested, the Comal was given its current name, which means, in Spanish, it means basin or flat dish. Basin or flat dish. So, so people may say, and you, I'm sure, absolutely right. People say "comal" around here, but Spanish, the "a" is not a hard "a." I mean, it's just I, I, I went in my head last time I was there, yeah, I pronounced it as "comal." Yeah, but you know. Well, this is Texas. <laughs> just pronounce everything. Well, my no, ninth grade Spanish still sticks. We pronounce with me. it correctly, y'all don't. Yeah. Oh, I took you other classes. Correctly? I took other Spanish classes. I never. Took, unfortunately. Well, let me just say, my years of living in, in San Marcos and going to college there, we always yeah. called it the Comal. Uh, yeah. And if you listen to people who live up there, it's Comal. Uh, so. But the river. Go ahead. People say glasses, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the river was discovered or identified by a Spanish. Uh, uh, they don't give a pronunciation here. For, Spanish word for palace, which if you were. A Spanish speaker, you say, and I'm not a Spanish speaker, so I'm trying to say it exactly right, but you say it more like Palacios. Oh. Yeah. Cass yeah. Hamburg would pronounce it. She pronounces it really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Comal or Palacios? Palacios. So, but I've only heard it Basin. pronounced as Palacios. Yeah, that's, everyone around here says it that way. 
just like everyone Palacios. says, Rafirio, which is a Spanish word that you wouldn't say Rafirio in Spanish. Yeah, I mean, you say it in broken Irish, you say Rafirio. <laughs> I guess, because I don't even think that's, I don't know how I got them there from. Well, Rafirio. there's the Arkansas River and there's the Arkansas River, so. Right. Two different rivers. All right. No, the same river. Well, I'm sure for Michelle and Beth and Phil and Teresa, they find this all fascinating. But any questions about <laughs> the Spanish pronunciations or about um, uh, no. how would you pronounce that? Right there. Oh, the Comal. I mean, that's how they're saying it. How uh, uh, it's? Can you speak it? Uh, Forty-six seventy-one. Oh, I didn't do it. I have an old computer. Oh. Uh, there's a pronunciation key, but I'm not sure how to do it. We're not going to mess around with that. We're going to do our trivia question. Did we post this? Oh, it is a trivia question. We got Texas. Oh, that's the news. We haven't got to the state news, but Ross Perot died today. Yes. H. Ross Perot. The state and national This news. story said that he died of leukemia. Yeah. yeah. Family spoke Short battle, too. Yeah. How old was he? 89. 89. Wow. You know, I was There's watching that. I forget the documentary um, on um, G.W. Bush. Uh, eight or H, whatever, the old man. Oh man! And um, George Herbert Walker. H. Um, what was it called? Was it called Forty Two? What was his number? Jackie well, Robinson was Forty Two. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but whatever number he was. Thanks for joining us. Whatever number he was. Anyway, and the subject of Perot comes up in a one-on-one interview, yeah. and Bush just says, "I'm not going to talk about that man." <laughs> That's well, they it. had some animosity politically. Speaking. Well, this says, did you read this? Perot, who's 19% of the vote in 1992, stands among the best showings by an independent candidate in the past century. Um, and I think they widely thought he took yes, away from... many Republicans said that's what... Uh, that would push caused, over. ...caused him to, to lose, uh, George yeah. Bush to lose the election. Oh, well, they wrote this through. Yeah. Well, so I forgot our trivia question. I'll ask that before we go into the other national news. Where did Vincent Van Gogh paint the Starry Night? Outside. <laughs> Outside. How do you know? It might have been looking through his window. Starry, Starry Night. You looking for a town? Yeah, where, where? I don't know. I guess. I'm guessing a location, yeah. A location like a friend, Paris. Out his back window. Paris, yeah. Nice. 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 Yeah. How do you say that city? Versailles. Nice. Nice. Nice guess. All right, the answer is no. Well, any others before we go to any other state or national news, Tony? Mm, sorry, my the other, um, uh, I'm looking up the state digest. There's not a no, but it said Perot spent $63.5 million of his own money and bought 30 minute television spots. Remember Didn't those? some other millionaire millionaire just announced today? I see that headline. Mm, yeah, some a Democrat Muslim? billionaire. Someone I have never heard York. of. Who is he? You know, we got to. Um, I know, I've never heard of him either. Maybe he should come in for our class on Saturday. Yeah, on how, how to serve public office. Yep. That'd be a good idea. Good idea. I should email him and suggest that. You got enough money, you can run for our public office, I guess. And one guy dropped out and one guy yeah, didn't. Yeah, the coffee magnet yeah. drop out, yeah. decided not to do it. Because he wasn't getting any support, yeah. So I don't know. What well, you got to figure somebody ain't going to get support. I can't find the story. It's not on the... It, I saw it earlier today. I saw a headline of it. Too. And Warren, or Warren, or whatever the lady's name is. Who, Elizabeth Warren? Yeah. yeah. Her fundraising has exceeded Bernie Sanders. Yes, Bernie Sanders. Oh. And mm -hmm. Biden, or Pete Buttigieg, a recent report, uh, outshines Joe Biden, too. No, that was on... We saw fundraising the or not? Poll, in fundraising. Poll, the polls fundraising. In fundraising. But Biden. Ahead of Democratic yeah. Right, but Buttigieg is raising more money than Biden right now. Mm -hmm. Biden probably has a lot of money. In Maybe Judge just by this time. Yeah. <laughs> as long as he attributes it. All right. What else? Uh, I can't find else? I'll right. keep anyway. looking for it. Well, now we'll, we'll wrap up here. Uh, I encourage everybody to read the paper <laughs> tomorrow. And, and right now, go to victoriaadvocate.com and listen to the audio uh, clip. Not that long, 21 minutes of the airport commission meeting. Uh, but uh, where did Vincent Van Gogh paint the Starry Night? The answer is Germany, the French village of Saint Remy de Provence. <laughs> Remy, Remy uh, de Provence. Van Gogh was being treated at an asylum in town <laughs> when he presented the Starry well, Night. Well, thank heaven. An asylum. That's probably like for health. 
because she's not mental asylum. But mm. Sure. I don't know. You know why Vincent Van Gogh cut his left ear off? Because uh, he, he couldn't reach it. his right ear? <laughs> <laughs> what? Because it was tapier than his right ear? <laughs> because he had a severe case of Meniere's disease, which is what I have in my left ear. And so he's trying to get the sound? He was know? trying to, he thought cutting the ear off would, but he must have had a, a, a louder, is it tendonitis? He's no the, uh, the, doctor. Think that was the high work. pitch, you know, the high pitch tone you hear. He really uh, thought that would work, huh? So he's thinking it would... Well, that that he never saw. Did he really realize about the inner ear? No, he didn't realize that. And okay. but that's based on letters he was writing um, his colleagues and his family uh, about this constant buzzing in his left ear. He had Meniere's disease. I think you should cut your left ear off too. I thought about it. <laughs> I really did. Well, I'll, I'll have to look for your paintings. And I would have to give up. Yeah, I'd have to start painting first. All right. Well, anyway, have to be decent. We would have, too. We would have cut this off, but I. We would have got any news, news questions desk, or want to talk to Tony about um, it's a painting. Go. Uh, give us a call here in the newsroom five seven four one two two two. Peace out. <laughs>